The Nintendo GameCube is one gem of a little console, especially in the racing category. Hey, I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games. And today, I look at 10 great racing games for the Nintendo GameCube. Second Opinion Games You can't talk about racing games on the GameCube without first paying due to Mario Kart Double Dash. It is, of course, a Mario Kart game, so the graphics and controls are going to be spot on. They also added a second driver in this portion, where you could flip back and forth, and who you pick actually matters. For example, Toads more likely to pick up mushrooms, and the Koopa Troopas are more likely to pick up turtle shells. And a combination of the two could give you the best of both worlds. Also, depending on which size characters you pick, depends on if you could ride around in a baby buggy or in a massive behemoth car. This little racing game is simply one of the best there ever was, and most people still consider it to be the best Mario Kart game ever made. But maybe you played Mario Kart to death. Well, what then? Well, that's when Pac-Man World Rally comes in. It is a little bit of a Mario Kart clone done by people that know how to make Mario Kart, because Namco made Mario Kart in the arcade for Nintendo. So they just took what they knew and added to it. And here we go, Pac-Man World Rally is actually the best Mario Kart clone ever made, with a little bit of Namco charm plugged in there. The graphics are great, the maps are just the right size, and there is plenty of shortcuts provided you find the right fruit to open them up. On top of it, the power pellets actually have a purpose. Collect enough of them and you can turn into an invincible Super Pac-Man, munching up every other contender on the field. And this racing game is simply heart-stopping, but maybe not Nintendo enough for you. So what then? Well, Kirby Air Ride, anyone? That's right, Kirby Air Ride by HAL Laboratories is a racing game where you don't even have to hit the gas pedal. It is metal to the floor the entire time. You do have a brake, which also doubles as the boost button, which is kind of confusing. Basically, you hold it in as you make a sharp corner, and then let that button go, and boom, you're off for a boost. Don't take advantage of it too much though, or actually slow your car down instead of speeding it up. And there's also plenty of power-ups on the boards as well, and tons of different mini-games to play. Kirby Air Ride still looks beautiful and is an extremely fun racing game. But maybe you want to race with actual cars instead. Well, then maybe you should have a look at Hot Wheels World Racing. This game, straight off the bat, looks beautiful. Not a speck of dust anywhere on any of these maps. And it has a cool boost system, collecting rings to earn boosts, maybe even doing flips off of really high jumps. The rubber banding AI is here in full force, but these maps look great. But something's missing here. There's no over-the-top announcers or any dirt, like I said. Matter of fact, sometimes there's even water on the screen, which is kind of weird. It's like a computer fully designed this game for other computers to play. Meaning it's kind of fun at spots, but there's always something missing. Hardly any special effects noises, and almost no screeching of tires. Just that continuous engine hum. So maybe you want a better game that gets down and dirty. Dome Racers is an extremely dirty racing game. When you're driving on a dirt track, you could actually taste the dirt flying in your face. Sometimes there's even a tornado directly on the track, making it hard to see or even to drive. But that's just a small bit of all the curves this game has to throw at you. Your car does move very, very slow at first. In the career mode, eventually you'll unlock more different pieces like engine parts and tires, creating your car to move even faster as you progress. Eventually, there'll be fire all over the tracks and things are gonna go crazy. But maybe this game is still too slow for you. Well, then... 
F Zero GX. By far the best looking racing game on the Nintendo GameCube. A matter of fact, if a friend of yours were to walk into the room while you're playing, if you just said you were playing a little PS4, he would completely believe you until he saw the controller in your hand, then call you a liar and throw a soda at your head, and it would be just horrible. That's a horrible friend. Why would he do that? But F-Zero GX, this is a fast, extremely exciting game full of precise precision controls. Remember that Nintendo GameCube controller I was talking about? Well, some people, they go on and on and on about how great it is, and you don't really notice it until you play this game. I am moving so fast, so often, that sometimes I can't even believe my own reaction speed. This game is unbelievable. Unbelievably hard. Because sometimes, just one little mistake, no matter even if you're on the last lap, and boom, you go flying off the course and you're dead. Too many times dying, and it is game over. That is the end of your career, my friends. So maybe you want something that looks and plays similar, but maybe just a little easier. Tube Sliders. Having a very unfortunate name that usually sounds like something I'd pay 50 bucks for, and you have a great racing experience here. It's quite a bit easier than F-Zero because you're not flying off the track but that doesn't mean you won't be flying all over the track. Being in one big tube, moving extremely fast, using your boost, and this is one of the best racing games on the GameCube, and it also looks amazing. There are tons of diverse tracks, and sometimes you'll be even wondering which way is up. This one will get you motion sick really, really fast. But, you spent all your money on all of these games, maybe now you need to earn a couple more dollars. What do you turn to then? Crazy Taxi! Hey, hey, hey! Coming barreling from your Dreamcast and into your GameCube, and the GameCube controller is perfect for this game, making it far more enjoyable to drive through San Francisco in this game than in real life. Not to mention, just like in San Francisco, you turn on the radio and Offspring is there to greet you happily. Well, maybe not happily, you'll probably be demonetized if you play any of their music on YouTube, but I really don't care because this game is terrific. Playing as a taxi driver of many different flavors and shapes and sizes, meaning four, there's four people here total, and you're pretty much guaranteed to find a personality that moderately fits your needs. This game is great, but maybe those four characters just aren't enough for you. Well... How about Simpsons Road Rage? The game with tons of personality and plenty of different characters to play with. A game that plays so much like Crazy Taxi, it inspired a lawsuit. However, this time, it plays even better with much refined controls and a map so you can actually see where you're going in case that stupid little hand or pointer is pointing you in the wrong stinking direction. All the original voice actors are here and it is very well animated. Graphics still hold up today, but it is starting to look a little bland. This game is great. Sometimes there's extra missions on top of what you need to do, such as run over mailboxes or just drop Homer off at the power plant without running into Mr. Burns. And this is the complete Simpsons package. Maybe even one of the best Simpsons games ever made, and they made a heck of a lot of them. But maybe driving in the traffic for just money isn't enough for you. Maybe you're just down for the thrills. Well, burnout. This time, instead of earning money when you drive headfirst in the traffic, you earn boost. Once you get that boost meter completely full, well, just hit it and your heart is going to pound out of your chest because you're going to now drive at a super fast pace. If you manage to hold in that boost the entire time without hitting a brake, well then that is a true burnout. This game was so good it kicked off a franchise that is still going strong to this day, along with a huge movement for other car smashing games. This is incredible. The controls are super tight and precise. Cars, when you're driving at them, move just enough that you can barely squeeze by, making your heart 
even pump more. The music is great, but a little generic, but it does keep you moving. And this game is simply one of the best. But I can't let it go without talking about just one more little franchise that is great to play on the GameCube. Need for Speed Most Wanted. Some of the best music ever in a racing game featuring likes of people like Eminem. Also, super tight controls. No need to break around corners when you could hit a freaking turbo and the ability to even slow time down to blast through roadblocks or even straighten your car out. This is extremely well made. On top of it, a big budget Hollywood story where you have to work your way up the blacklist and see tons of hotties wearing practically nothing. And I'm pretty sure this isn't standard uniform for a police officer. And this is the creme de la creme amongst GameCube racing games. Simply a must have and certainly gets my adrenaline pumping so much. And I hope you enjoyed this list, guys, because I spent a ton of time on it. These are some of the best racing games ever made. And they happen to be on the Nintendo GameCube, a console that really wasn't well known for its racing games. But you know what? I hope I made the argument that Nintendo's GameCube actually had the best racing games of any Nintendo console. But that's just my opinion. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit that sub button. And I, yes, I know there was not 10 games here. I actually had 11. I just wanted to play around. And hopefully you guys leave a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite racing game is, even if it's not on the GameCube. And until later, I'll see you again, guys.